Lecture number four for chapters 20 and 21 will be about other lymphoid organs and tissues. And the first of those that we're going to review is the thymus. And uh, this is an organ that uh, is also classified as an endocrine organ because it does produce chemical signaling molecules called thymocins that stimulate T cells to mature. There goes one of my dachshunds barking. Now your T cells, your T lymphocytes, they're initially made in the red bone marrow. You know, as you talked about back in chapter 17. And then they travel through the blood to the thymus. And then they go through a maturation process in the th thymus where they become fully mature T cells. And then from there, they migrate to other lymphatic organs. And then they're stationed there to try to intercept things that are foreign to the body and are invading. And again, your lymphatics are great places to intercept those types of things. The thymus is actually larger when you're an infant. You know, when you're an infant, your first form is actually extending all the way from the inferior lower part of the neck and through the mediastinum onto the superior aspect of the heart and actually partially overlies the heart. Increases in size, it's very active during childhood, but as you get older and as you become an adult, um, it atrophies. That means that it shrinks and um, is no longer quite as active. The reason for that, uh, you know, throughout your lifetime, especially when you're a child, you're getting exposed to lots of foreign invaders, lots of different types of bacteria and viruses, and um, your uh, T cells are, you know, a, a huge part in developing immunity to those types of things. And as you become an adult and you get older, you've kind of built up a pretty good library of T cells. Um, so we get exposed all the time to pathogens. Uh, and again, a pathogen is a microorganism that's capable of causing disease. We get exposed to those all the time. And your T cells and your B cells and your other white blood cells of your immune system just zap them before they're capable of making you sick. And part of that is because you've built up this nice library of these uh, white blood cells over the course of your childhood and on into your young adulthood. And so when you become an adult, you don't need as many maturing T cells because you have this library of, of uh, ones that remember what you've been exposed to and they're available to help you with your immunity. All right, and then how about your tonsils? You know, what are tonsils? These are the simplest of the lymphoid organs. They're almost like lymph nodes that are exposed at the surface. And um, they kind of form a ring of lymphatic tissue around the pharynx. Again, your pharynx, if you guys remember, that's the area back. Um, much of it sits behind the tongue at the back of your throat. And then parts of it extend up toward the nasal cavity and part of it extends downward toward your esophagus and your larynx. So you have a few different groups of tonsils. You have uh, two palatine tonsils, and uh, palatine is referring to the hard palate. So they're at the back of your palate, the roof of your mouth, um, you know where you've got your uvula back there. They're on lateral to the uvula, the little flap that hangs down at the back of your throat. <clears throat> The lingual tonsils are way, 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 way back at the back um, part of your tongue that extends, you know, way down in there. You can't even really see that part of your tongue very well. Your pharyngeal tonsils are actually in the nasopharynx. That's the part of the pharynx that extends between your nasal cavity and the the back of your throat, that portion of your pharynx. Those are also called your adenoids. And then you also have some small ones called tubal tonsils, and they actually are around the openings to your auditory tubes or your or your eustachian tubes that extend from the inner ear to the uh, to the nasal the nasal portion of the pharynx. And basically a tonsil is, you know, almost like a lymph node that is, that is exposed there at the surface. You know, this would be like the surface of the roof of your mouth over here. And you go down in there, there's, there are crypts, almost like little tombs that you can go down inside there. 
and um, you know the purple stained areas that you see here on the slide you have lots of lymphoid cells in there you have B cells and T cells and macrophages and so forth and they're stationed there to intercept things that are foreign to the body and if you think about the locations of these tonsils they're positioned in places where we tend to take in lots of microorganisms and other things that are foreign to the body like pollen grains and so forth so it's good that we have those there in those locations because um, that's a great place to have all of these immune system warriors stationed for us. This is a pretty good diagram from your textbook, which is showing you, you know, we've got a cross section through a person's nasal cavity and pharynx and, and oral cavity. And in yellow there, you can see where your pharyngeal tonsils are located. And again, those are also known as your adenoids, the palatine tonsils. Those are the ones you can actually see you know, when a well, so many of us who are adults have had our tonsils out, but a little kid when they say, ah, and you look into the back of your, their throat, and if those are swollen because they have tonsillitis, those are the ones you're actually seeing on either side of the uvula. And then here you can see the lingual tonsils are way, way, way at the uh, very back end of the, back end of the um, tongue. Lingual refers to the tongue. Here are a couple of images of tonsillitis, and again, tonsillitis occurs when the tonsils are experiencing inflammation. Now, if you have an infection, like in the back of your throat, like let's say you have strep throat, um, you know, the tonsils are going to swell because some of those bacteria that cause strep throat are going to be intercepted by the lymphoid cells, your B cells and your T cells that are stationed there inside those tonsils and so then those cells are going to divide to kind of create a T cell and a B cell army to help fight the infection and so they're going to swell. When you have tonsillitis though uh, the tonsils themselves become infected. So you can actually have bacteria or viruses growing inside the tonsils and your uh, immune cells are not doing a very good job yet of clearing them away and that stimulates inflammation and swelling uh, they can become extremely large like you see here in the diagram you're looking into the back of someone's throat there's the uvula hanging down you know obviously here's the tongue and look how big the swollen tonsils are in this picture over here the little patches you see there are uh, likely to be pus and whenever you see pus that comes from neutrophils swarming in. Remember your neutrophils, those are your first responders to a, um, an infection and they're especially good at responding to bacteria. So if you see that on the surface of someone's tonsils, they probably have a bacterial infection within those tissues since you're seeing the pus there. And then sometimes people, especially kids, have ongoing tonsillitis. They keep, their tonsils keep getting infected over and over again and if so they may have to undergo a tonsillectomy um, where their tonsils are going to wind up being removed okay some additional not everybody's heard of tonsils but you may not have ever heard of these tissues they're called malt which stands for mucosa associated lymphatic tissue these are patches or little nodules of lymphatic tissues that are located along mucous membranes. And if you guys remember where you have these membranes, they are located along surfaces that line the respiratory, the digestive, the urinary, and the respiratory tracts. And so along some of these surfaces, you do have these um, those linings are also called mucosa. So those are the epithelial linings that you have in those um, inner compartments of the body. In the digestive tract down along the uh, small intestine, you have patches of lymphatic tissue. Those are called Peyer's patches. And so they're almost kind of like tonsils that you have down in your digestive tract. They don't uh, penetrate quite as deep down uh, beneath the surface, but you've got B cells and T cells and macrophages stationed there. That's also a good place to have those types of immune system warriors stationed and ready to intercept things because, you know, we drink 
uh, beverages and take in foods all the time that have microorganisms in them. So that is a, a site where infections get started pretty often. And so it's good that we have uh, some of our immune warriors stationed down in that part of the body. Um, the tonsils, the appendix has some of these tissues in it as well. If you guys remember the uh, appendix, that little appendage that hangs off of the first part of the, the colon. In your respiratory tract, within the walls of your bronchi, your uh, air passages, there are little nodules or little patches of lymphatic tissues as well. That's also a great place to have these. You know, you're constantly breathing in air that contains microorganisms and, um, you know, your uh, lymphatic tissues in your pharynx don't always catch those. And so uh, having those protective patches of tissue down in your respiratory system makes it less likely that microorganisms are going to be able to get down deep into the lungs and cause infections. All right, so I just wanted to point out those additional uh, types of tissues. Do be sure you can recognize the different types of tonsils that were on the diagram from your textbook. I checked on visible body and uh, to see how they were displaying tonsils and they do a pretty good job with the palatine tonsils but not the other ones. They're not even um, shown on visible body so I'm not going to bring it up for the tonsils. Just be aware of the, the names of the different types of tonsils and where they're located. So in the next lecture, we're actually going to move on uh, to chapter 21, which covers the immune system. And again, we're just going to be hitting some basic highlights uh, from this chapter. If you're reading in the textbook, it's going to have a whole lot more detail associated with it. But we'll pick up that with lecture number five.